Uh, next guy, want to sign in? Yep. Yes, you're on sign in, grab a badge. Yep. I think that they were talking about that the other day and I uh, we're trying to in the reception we just checked in, there's the museum in here circling all the way around the room and it dates back over there. I think as far as 1890 and there are guns of all generations right up to the modern day surrounding us and all the way into there too. There are hundreds of magazine articles and just everything you can imagine over the decades a rifle manufacturer. I mean this doesn't look that old yet yeah, 1910 we were in the First World War when this was going on here to 1920. This is Chief Lane Deer and he was the original logo for Savage Rifles. It's all barrel storage down here. It's nice to see that not everything is done electronically. There's still a lot of you know manual engineering goes on here. The build process. Let's see all the receivers here. It's not finished though, because it'll get swung up onto the gun. Okay.
we're gonna crown it. valuable man in the whole building. I guess I am because we, we, we straighten but we also inspect. Yeah. All that process that we go through, you know, the, the rifling, the drilling, right here, turning where they cut it, they put the thread and they cut. I got to inspect over here. So I straighten but I also inspect the barrel. Now, I could tell when the the thread's starting to go, you touch it, and you feel like little hair like yes, yes, poking yes, you. Yes. Not bad, not bad yet. But I let him know he'll change the, the cover. Keep running. In a right heat code. All right, this is supposed to be 5P caliber R&R. R&R? Yeah. 5P. Right. After I do the first piece, I gauge it and I got to cast it to make sure all the tools are the same. I write what it's supposed to be. I use three tools. Four drill, a semi, and a finish. Up. The polymer in there to seal the gas chamber 
nice and smooth for this piece. Right? I find out when I, when I do uh, the, my gauge, I know that that's my finish. Okay. But you see when you get two two, two lines, uh, that's my second two. Yeah. Get one line, a little bit of chatter right there, that'll be this one right here. But I want it. then get polished and washed. Find the receivers now. We're, gonna do is we're just going to induction harden the two ends. Okay. What that's doing for is if we were to heat treat this all the way through and we had a failure, it's going to throw shrapnel out all over. By just doing the two ends, what happens if there is a failure, it just peels back like a banana. Right? Bolt bodies up there, 12 feet long tubing. And they get turned into this. This machine lives at 1500 Fahrenheit. It's for heat treating bolt bodies, bolt handles, all sorts of internal small components. Depending on what they are and how, uh, how deep the hardening goes, whether they're case hardened or through hardened, depends on the time that items are in it for. If anything needs to be changed on it, it takes it three whole days for the machine to cool down once it's been switched off its cooling. But that door there only opens long enough for the tray to roll in whatever's going in there. And then it comes through and out the far end where they can control quenching. And I've just been told that's 815 degrees Celsius by Brett. These are all chemical treatment tanks for various surface passivations, coatings, etc. Here you can see the raw item and the finished item. So that'll take out any defects, but more importantly what it's doing is it's grinding it down so it's straight. When he puts that in you can actually feel the vibrations go through the floor. That's the roll stuff. Those bolt bodies stay in that machine for five hours being polished. You can't really see them, but in here we've got bolt heads being polished. How long do they stay in there for? Five hours. 
over five hours as well. Interchangeable ball heads. Putting the washer in the front bath line. Yep. Then they'll also put the extractors in. Alright. So there's the front baffle. Yeah. The friction washer. And then they put the extractor in. Assembly, this machine here is pneumatically cocking every bolt, and I presume it will then stay cocked right through until the final assembly of the rifle itself. So, this is adding the barrel now to the receiver. And what you'll see here is it's got the barrel clamped in the jig, on goes the barrel nut. Spin that in place now with this automated tool just to speed things up a little bit. And now I think he's just put the go gauge in there. On goes the action. Spin that into position. The bolt's installed here, the go gauge controls the head space. He's tightening the barrel nut up by hand and now Locking the recoil lug into the jig, he puts on the torque wrench, and that then swaps in, puts the no go gauge in, and there's another one ready to go. Now you can see the, now you can see the gauge is standing ready for it to go, go and no go. These are Savage um, Axis trigger groups that are just being assembled and built on here. Yeah. Only, only one without an echo trigger. Yeah, where's an echo trigger? No, Sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah. So this, this one doesn't have the echo trigger. Yeah, this is the last one without echo trigger. Right. And then, without? 
And with that, your accu trigger. That is what a bucket full of triggers looks like. That is a finished accu trigger there, next to one of the Savage Actions triggers, which doesn't have the accu trigger assembly on it. trigger assembly here. the laser engraving process on the action of the bolt now. They're actually just building uh, what they call a cell, which is like an individual yeah, manufacturing yeah. sector. And the individual cell they're building next is for Cerakoting. All these guns here would have before gone out for Cerakoting in a separate yeah. building, but now they're all going to be done in this very room. There's quite a few guns there. All the guns they're building have already been pre-sold, so they're not building anything for stock at all. Here we've got a load of laminate stocks. We've got dark coloured, light coloured, additional picketing mounts on the bottom of the rails. Those are all ready to go out. I was just walking along thinking there's a very big hole in the end of that. That's a 450 Bushmaster. That's all tight. Probably holding it. This is VXM. Nice. It's in it's different, different colors, you know. This one's got a little bit more brown, this has got yeah, a little yeah. bit more gray in it. Yeah. But. Dominic, that's actually your rifle. It's actually Dominic's rifle, that one. Oh, sorry. So. Move this hand, let it eject. Move this hand. Put your thumb here. Pull, pull back. Move These guns are all being proofed in house. Judging by the fast fire there, that was yeah, a semi automatic. We're watching guns being proofed at the moment. These are semi auto, so you'll hear by the rate of fire. Bang, bang, bang. And then they'll come out, they go onto this little bench here, and they get stamped with a proof mark. You see, these are all the ones that have been done while we've been in the room. It's all in-house, it's not an external agency, like in the UK, so 
quite simplistically, it's destructive testing. They didn't blow up. So this one will come back here now, goes onto here, plunk, and we're good to go. That's proofed. There are just rifles everywhere. Here's my freshly built rifle. It's been proven now. It's even got my name on it. Right, well, you'll see when I do the full edit, there's a video of me building this. This is a Savage Impulse Mountain Hunter. So it's a straight pull rifle and it's in a, obviously a lightweight specification with a proof research barrel. This is a 7mm PRC, which is a pretty new cartridge to most of the people in the UK. But this is what we're going to be shooting the pronghorn antelope with on the hunt in Colorado. And when we get back, I'm actually going to be doing a full review on this rifle in England for you all to see and you can learn a bit more about the handling, the shootability and the ballistics of this new cartridge from Hornady as well.